Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be going over the last armor, unique armor, on the list. I believe this uh, finishes them all off. I'll do a double check through them just to make sure, because, you know, I, I never know if I miss one particular item. Because I do want to do a video on all these items. Uh, but this last one that I think, I think is the last one anyway, is the Steel Carpace Shadow Plate. Now, the Steel Carpace, Carpace Shadow Plate is an elite armor, and unfortunately for the elite armors, um, they have really high strength requirements. Um, and so one of the biggest downsides of this armor, quite honestly, is its extremely high strength requirement of 230. Uh, most characters in Diablo will never reach 230 strength. Um, there are very few characters in the game that actually will have 230 strength at any given point, and, um, and that really limits the usability of this armor, like, insanely. Um, it do doesn't even have anything to do with the stats that are on this piece of equipment. It's just 230 strength is it's just too much. Um, they probably should have given this maybe, like, a little bit of a negative requirements. Even, like, negative 10% requirements would have gone a long, a long way to make this armor a little bit more usable for uh, most characters. Uh, we have a pretty massive defense on this thing, though, of 1,785, which is a pretty high level of defense for a plate. And uh, and it does vary a little bit from... Um, uh, what is it? Do, do, do. It's like it's 190 to 220%. Um, so not really a huge variable there, but 30%. Um, and since defense is, seems to be one of this armor's like main characteristics... Well, I mean, uh, you kind of want to find it in, the, in a better form. Uh, we also have a level requirement of 66, which is, um, it's kind of low. It's kind of like a mid-tier, mid-to-end tier, mid to end tier uh, mid to end, mid to end game armor. So not, like, super terrible. Um, it has an interesting effect of 8% chance to cast level 6 Iron Maiden when struck, which, until recently, was absolutely useless, and, uh, and quite honestly, probably helped absolutely no one. Um, the thing about Iron Maiden is that Thorns and Iron Maiden and all those beautiful things were kind of um, very poorly developed back in the original versions of Diablo. Um, you had to actually land a hit to cause the Thorns to activate, and um, one of the main characteristics of this armor is its defense. So you put this armor on, you end up getting an Iron Maiden proc on a target, and then he can't hit you, and so you're just... Like, okay, well, what was the point of putting Iron Maiden on this armor if you were going to focus so heavily on making sure he couldn't hit me in the first place? Uh, because it it literally gets to the point where you're just like, okay, well, I might as well not even have Iron Maiden. Uh, maybe it would work if you had some mercenaries or some minions or something that the Iron Maiden could, uh, could also work on. But now in 2.4, they changed it so that Iron Maiden is win uh, on attack, not win struck. And, uh, and this is a pretty big boon because this means that you no longer have to actually be hit to have the effect proc. Now it is actually so that, you know, if, if they even attempt to hit, um, you'll have the nice damage return. And, uh, and it's pretty sweet. Um, the main issue, though, is that uh, if you take a look at my GGM underscore cactus video, uh, where I go through the process of building a Thorns character, um, Thorns damage really isn't quite there enough. And it needs to be supported by Amplify Damage to actually do a significant amount of Thorns damage. Um, and the problem with Iron Maiden is that it overwrites Amplify Damage, so you can't have both up at the same time. Um, it does have 20% faster hit recovery on it, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, it's always nice to have a little bit of FHR. 220% uh, enhanced defense, as we talked about. Um, and then it also has regenerate mana 15%, which is just one of the oddest things I've ever seen. And it varies from 10 to 15%. I mean, here we have an armor which is almost exclusively pointed at high-strength characters, which are most likely going to be melees. And it comes with regenerate mana 15%. I, do, I really don't understand that one. And then they couldn't even just give you the 15% regenerate mana. They had to make it a, a variable of 10 to 15%. Um, then we have cold resistance on here. Um, only cold, no other resistance. Not exactly sure why cold was the only resistance that they chose to put on here. But it also varies from 40 to 60%. Um, it, it's very odd, in my opinion, to have a... Uh, single resistance on here and then make it really high like this but then make it a variable 
Um, I mean, most people are going to be wanting armors like Chains of Honor, which have 65 all res, but this armor has 60 just to cold. Um, and then on top of that, it also has damage reduced by on it, which is actually a pretty nice statistic, especially for, like, energy shield sorceresses and stuff. But I don't see an energy shield sorceress ever coming anywhere near this armor, because 230 strength is just out of their reach. And um, it also varies from 9 to 14. So we've got a variable on the defense. We've got a variable on the regenerate mana. We've got a variable on the cold resistance. We've got a variable on the damage reduced by... And uh, and all of this just makes for just a lot of sadness. Like, because when you find this, it's going to be in a poor condition, and you're probably not even going to want to use it because it's got like 10% regenerate mana, 9 DR, and 40% cold res, and like terrible defense. So you're just, you look at it and you're like, okay, it's a piece of garbage and you throw it away. Now, there is an ethereal version that drops, and because this armor does have the repairs one durability in 20 seconds modifier, you could actually use this in the ethereal form without putting a Zod rune in it, which is pretty cool. Um, and it, again, has even more defense than the previous version. So it has 2,678 defense, which is massive. So the Steel Carpace Shadow Plate is almost always preferred to be found and used in its ethereal form, which means that whenever you find the non-ethereal one, it's pretty much just garbage. Um, now... In its ethereal form, the defense is so massive that I can't even, like, imagine putting this on a character and actually trying to utilize that Iron Maiden <clears throat> because it just it doesn't seem like a good idea at all. Um, you could obviously put this on a Mercenary uh, if you didn't have anything better. The 20% faster hit recovery combined with the really high defense would do a lot to help your keep your Mercenary alive. Um, the DR will also help keep your mercenary alive, and of course the resistances as well. Um, it's actually not a terrible plate to throw on a mercenary if you just didn't have anything better. So like if you came across an ethereal steel car pace shadow plate, why not? Um, the only real downside of putting this on a mercenary is that it's going to proc the Iron Maiden. Um, and let's say, for instance, you had a Reaper's Toll, or um, you were using something like um, Witch Wild String, which has Amplify Damage proc, or uh, maybe you were using a Lawbringer, which has Decrepify. Um, the Iron Maiden is going to overwrite those other curses. So putting this on your Mercenary is going to be a detriment for those characters who are trying to apply other curses. And in you as well, if you're trying to apply another curse, if you're trying to apply Amp, Decrepify, or any of those other curses, this is going to overwrite your Amplify damage, and it's going to be a bad thing, not a good thing. Uh, because in general, Amplify damage or Decrepify is going to be a superior choice to Iron Maiden, unless you're maybe like a... Um... Actually, no, I can't think of anything that would... I can't think of any character that would want Iron Maiden over Amplify damage. Maybe a Summon Druid? Maybe, if you were like really into thorns and you wanted like thorns on you and thorns on your merc and like spirit of the barbs and then throw in iron maiden too but but even in that situation i think amplify damage would still probably be the better choice i mean it does look kind of cool at least i mean there's that there's like a like a black kind of a motif with like the like the teeth and the little 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 horns sticking out all over the place Um, also, because it's ethereal, and I forgot to mention this, um, all ethereal items have requirements that are lowered by 10, 10 points flat. So as you can see, the um, ethereal version has 220 strength requirement, not 230. Um, which, quite honestly, is another reason why the non-ethereal version is pretty much just garbage. Uh, because the non-ethereal version has lower defense, it has higher strength requirements, and quite honestly, it's just not the better choice when you're trying to use this. So if you were ever specifically trying to get your hands on a Steel Carapace Shadow Plate and you wanted it for your character, um, hunt for the Ethereal version because it's going to be the better choice all around um, in requirements and also in defense and quite honestly just just the, the coolness factor as well. Um, let's take a look over on Silo's Pen and let's see where we could potentially locate this item. Um, it's going to be kind of a rare drop. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be as rare as something like Tyrael's, 
but it should potentially be a, a rarer drop than um, than some other items. All right, so steel carapace. Pink. There we go. All right, so I'm going to assume 400% magic fine because this is an end game level item. Um, at level 66, I mean, we're talking about higher level characters would be hunting for this. 400% uh, magic fine is a pretty decent amount. And uh, let's go ahead and sort by probability. Actually, let's go to bosses first. Uh, yours just. Uh, so Bale, 1 in 2066. The Ilithak, 1 in 15,000. Diablo, 1 in 16,000. So, some pretty god awful choices there. Just not really that great. Um, the rank defilers obviously have really awful cho chances. Uh, Bale in Hell is really your best chance, but obviously he takes a long time to farm. And Diablo is pretty awful at 1 in 16,686, so you're probably not going to get it from him. Um, you might be in a situation where yeah, Bale might be the only real choice to farm for this. Let's take a look at uh, Super Unique, so maybe there's a better option in the Super Unique category. Uh, so Pindleskin's not bad at 1 in 17,736. That could be an option. Uh, Thresh Socket is about the same. And um, Doc Farron is pretty terrible, but you could kill him on the way to Thresh Socket. Um, it does look like each one of the um, the Bale Waves has a crappy chance of dropping it. Probably not going to get it from the Bale Waves, but there's there's always the odd possibility. Um, yeah, it looks like either Pindleskin, um, Inhale Difficulty, or Hell Bale. Uh, those are really your two, your only two really good options. I mean, you could also farm Neelithak here at 1 in 15,000. But Neelithak is a little bit harder to farm than Pindle. Um, not too much harder, by the way. So if you ever want to like look up and find out how to farm Pindle Skin on a regular basis, um, I do actually have a video on that, um, basically going over how to farm Pindle Skin, knowing exactly where he is, how to read the map, basically, so that you can get to him every single time you know, really quickly. But even with my, my directions, um, even when you learn them and you get them down packed, you're still not going to be able to kill Neelithak faster than Pindle Skin. Uh, Pindle skin, obviously, you just walk to the portal, and he's he's literally standing right there. Um, so I mean, I, you really you really don't get faster than Pindle skin kills. Uh, I'm not really sure what to say about this armor in closing. Like, I feel like nobody, for the most part, is ever going to use this except for in a niche build. Um, I mean, if you happen to find the ethereal version, it's probably going to be something that you're going to hold on to just simply because it's a really kind of a cool sort of an item. Like, you know, you, you're looking at it and you're like, OK, well, this is actually kind of neat. Um, I'll put this on a mule somewhere and I'll probably never use it. Um, 220 strength is enough that you could throw this on a Act 5 Merc, the new Act 5 Frenzy Merc, I think he does have around 220 strength. So it could potentially go on him on like around like like a level 95 uh, sort of a Merc. And um, I mean, it's, it's yeah. I mean, if I found an Ethereal Steel Carapace, I'd probably hold on to it. Um, would I ever actually use it on a character? Probably not. Um, and that's unfortunately just, just the case. Unless I was going for like some sort of max defense build or something, which uh, me and Kyle were talking about one day, like a max defense build. 2,678 defense is a lot of freaking defense. And you could theoretically socket it with a... Um, what's that rune that has defense on it? Isn't it a pull rune? Yes, it's a pull rune. So you could take a pull rune, you could put it in there, and you could bring it up to 2,929 which is a pretty sexy amount of defense, I'm not going to lie. I mean, that's bordering on 3,000 defense for a uh, for just a single piece of armor. And uh, even all by itself, the amount of defense that that gives you um, on characters that can multiply defense is pretty massive. Like you're, if you're a barbarian, if you're a, um, 
a paladin with holy shield, if you're a you know like a sorceress with your shiver armor, you can multiply that that two thousand nine hundred and twenty nine to some pretty massive proportions. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and uh, make sure that you uh, check your steel car pace because you might have a really nice uh, ethereal version, and uh, keep watching.